Welcome to this episode of Intellectual Conservatism. My name is Swan Sona, and today I'm here to talk about my visit to the Dominicans of the Central Province in Denver, Colorado. So why does Denver, Colorado matter for this visit? Well, it matters because in Denver, Colorado, you have what's known as St. Dominic's Priory. Now, St. Dominic's Priory is a house where a group of Dominican friars, you know, brothers and priests live together, but it's also the formation house. It's the novitiate. It's the house where the novices will spend their first year discerning if this is their calling in life. And so, you know, one thing to point out is the Dominicans, when you discern with them or any religious order, they don't force you to immediately make permanent lifelong vows. So during that first formation novitiate year, what you're spending time uh, doing is you're living out that religious order's way of life. And then if you, you know, decide not to leave and you remain for the full year and you decide to go forward, then you can make what's called simple vows. These are, you know, two year long commitments that you're going to continue to live out the order's way of life. Now, one thing to point out is that during your novitiate year, you can technically leave whenever you feel as if the Lord is calling you. So you're not bound to finish that first year either. Um, but of course, you have to discern well during that time period. So I visited uh, St. Dominic's Priory in order to see what my life would possibly be like if I joined the order and entered as a novice. And so this visit was really important to me to just kind of, you know, take a break from apologetics and research to reorient myself, but also to focus once again on my vocation in life as a Catholic. Because, you know, for Catholics, and even I guess for any Christian, you know, God's calling is incredibly important, right? So, you know, maybe God's calling you to be a minister. God's calling you to be a missionary. In the case of a Catholic, you know, you're called to the vocation of marriage, which is a sacrament, or the vocation of holy orders to be a priest and a bishop and part of the clergy. So as I've been discerning over time, I've grown further and further in love with the Dominicans, and I wanted to share a piece of my discernment with you. So this is my third visit uh, with them. I visited once in Chicago and once in St. Louis. And uh, this time around, I'm eligible now to ask for an application. So keep me in your prayers. And I hope that you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed the trip. So I begin the video by just kind of, you know, arriving at Denver's airport. Uh, I've compiled a bunch of videos together on Snapchat in case you're wondering how I edited all this. Um, and I don't know if you saw in the beginning, but I was wearing uh, the mask of the central uh, of the central province, and then I also had a Dominican jacket on with the seal of the order. Uh, yeah, and so in, in case you're wondering, there are different provinces in the Dominican order, at least in North America. You have the Western province, Eastern province, Southern province, and go figure, Central province, which is what I'm visiting right now. So because the Denver airport's so big, you have to go on these trains in order to navigate through the airport itself between all the terminals. Um, after I got off my plane, I needed to get on these trains to get to the other trains that get you to the city so that I could finally, you know, be picked up by the Dominicans. Funnily enough, I accidentally missed my stop because I was just like confused with how big the airport was. And so I'm left on here just awkwardly waiting. So I had to go through the whole uh, airport ride again, and then finally I get off. So I'm walking through the airport now. And as I get outside, I'm going to go down these escalators to get to the other train stop. Or the other set of trains, excuse me. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I just include like my face reactions in this in this video. It's kind of funny. I don't know. I think it's just to show that I was pretty exhausted. Uh, and then there you have a uh, interesting artwork that I thought would make a cool rock climbing wall. All right, so we get down into the trains, and eventually you'll see me on them. So there they are. All right, so I'm on the trains now. The ride takes about 40 minutes to get to the city from the airport. So, you know, I was in there for a while. And this piece of artwork here, it looked like some kind of dinosaur skeleton, you know, like maybe the Megalodon or some giant whale, who knows. But I just thought it was like strange to look at. All right, so there I am in the train. There I am, pretty tired. And then I do record, I think, my shadow in the next clip. Oh, not this one. Okay, the next one. <laughs> I look so tired. <laughs> okay, there we are. I was getting bored, sorry. Okay. And then we finally make it to the city. I'm at my stop. And we get up. 
And so now I have to find the uh, Dominican friars who are in their car to pick me up. Oh, and some of you might be wondering, like, wait, I thought the Dominicans made a vow of poverty because they're a religious order. Why do they have cars? Well, the thing is with the vow of poverty, you know, you don't have a bank account for yourself and you share all things in common. And so the car was basically owned by the house and all the brothers there. Okay, so jump cut. I make it to the Priory itself. I'm inside my room just chilling. I had the permission of this brother to record him working on a crossword puzzle. And if you notice, the facility, the house is very nice. And there, uh, we are right now going to um, visit one of the friends of the order. And so I got to go with the novitiates during this, like, uh, you know, holiday season. And so I got to see, you know, a lot of the Dominicans, not just, you know, in prayer and study, but also kind of having fun and partying, which was a nice touch. So we drive through Hipster Central. And, you know, we go up through the mountains. Yes, it's beautiful, natural beauty. And eventually we arrive at the house and, uh, you know, just beautiful, beautiful out there. Now, the reason why I was laughing because one of the brothers joked that he hadn't seen a phone in a long time and pretended to be mystified at what I was holding. Um, so there we are at, at the St. Dominic's Church. And then um, I'm going from the top floor, just kind of showing off, you know, the formation house itself, kind of the ins and outs, to the basement. And I'm, you know, I, I didn't have... I thought it would be best if I didn't record every single thing that I was doing to make sure that I was in the moment. And so the last thing that I'm going to show you is just the library of the novices themselves. And so, you know, all the brothers, they, they share these books together. And so they had some really great collections of, you know, commentaries on St. Thomas Aquinas, the Summa itself, uh, and other great Thomas philosophers. So here you're going to see um, right there, I'm going to pull it out actually. So yeah, there we go. Aquinas and Analogy by Ralph McGinry. I wish I had read that book before I talked to Cameron about the doctrine of analogy, because it maybe would have helped me just explain a little bit better. So yeah, well, maybe I can get someone on my show to talk about the doctrine of analogy. Some works of Yves Congar, famous uh, Dominican friar during the Second Vatican Council, 20th century. And then, okay, so just to kind of recap, I'm repeating some clips again to give me a break so that I can um, kind of reflect on the trip. Um, it was a great time to see the way the Dominicans live. And sometimes when you think about a religious order and people who are, you know, living in poverty or, you know, who are uh, living in this type of life, you think that they might be like holier than thou and, you know, uh, living off of scraps. And no, like the Dominicans, um, they lived well as brothers. And you could see just how happy they were. You could see how sincere they are about their studies and about um, the things that they're doing in ministry and in their everyday lives. And so one thing that you might, be shocked by is that, you know, when you see a religious sister, as I did, I, one, the Nashville Dominican sisters, some two of them came to visit. Um, you see a religious sister and you're like, wow, this woman's so holy. Like, uh, uh, you know, can I even talk to her? And then you, you start talking and you realize in a remarkable way, this is another human being who has been called to an extraordinary way of life. And so that was like one of the big takeaways for me um, from this trip. Of course, I do have more to say. And so I'm going to exit out of Zoom and get to it. Thank you for watching the video, and I want to give a special thank you to the Dominicans of the Centre Province, and especially the fathers and brothers who were there um, at the Priory itself for inviting me, for including me in your prayers, and so on and so forth. Uh, I just want to mention maybe one memory that I didn't record on video because, you know, you're there to discern, you're not there to really record and vlog all the time, and so I tried to minimize how much I record and stuff like that. But I also wanted to share, you know, a very important part of my discernment with you. Um, there was a time during Mass where you have the novice master. So this is going to be um, a priest, a Dominican priest, who's lived the Dominican way of life for a while. And he's there to kind of guide the novices and help them schedule out their day and prepare them for the Dominican way of life. Well, um, you know, Father Dave, I'll mention his name, he's the novice master and he had celebrated Mass. And, you know, us, well, the Dominican brothers and me being the candidate were there in attendance. And, you know, nobody else. It was just us. And I remember during that mass, when it was time to give the sign of peace, instead of, you know, like, you know, in the parish, you just give a handshake or you just wave at somebody or something like that. Um, we all hugged each other 
and we made sure that everyone had hugged everybody else that was in the chapel. And I remember, I, you know, I hugged Father Dave, and Father Dave is just this very sweet grandfatherly figure. And even all the brothers, too, really felt like genuine brothers, and I, I've developed great friendships with them. Um, it was just so wonderful to feel that fraternal spirit with them, to feel, you know, the brotherhood there. And so I had a wonderful time with them, and it was a great way to see that, you know, the, the, the Catholic way of life is so much more mystical, wonderful, than just, you know, the, the bare theology, right? There, there's a whole way of life. There's a whole way of prayer. There's a whole tradition that we can draw from, and it's beautiful. It's living. It's, you know, it's, it's a sacramental way of life, and so, you know, visiting the Dominicans reminded me of that again, and um, it, it brought happiness to my soul. And so keep me in your prayers, all the subscribers and followers of the channel. If you want to keep up with the future of the channel, then please, uh, you know, check out Patreon. Or, of course, you know, I'll be updating you on YouTube as well. Thank you so much.